Good? Cool. Okay. All right. Um, all right, okay. So, um, now it's my time to teach, right? So what I'd like to do is show you guys um, how to go ahead and solve this inequality. Now, this is gonna be a multi-step inequality because what we're gonna do is we're gonna have multi-steps um, completing this. If you guys notice, there's a lot of stuff going on here, right? Well, the first thing to not get confused with this is, remember, we don't really need to care, worry about our inequality sign right now. We can just convert it to an equation and then, um, re then worry about it at the end. So I'm just gonna write the inequality sign above and I'm gonna change this to an equal sign, all right? So now we need to remember, how do we solve equations? Well, remember, we need to get a variable all by itself, right? So if you guys notice here, I have a variable on the left and a variable on the right side. So eventually, I'm going to have to get that variable to the same side. Now, if you remember, when we simplify, we can use PEMDAS, which means parentheses. I need to combine like terms inside my parentheses first. Well, here I have a negative 6 and an n, and an n and a 3. I cannot combine those. So therefore, outside parentheses, I'm done. However, the next thing I want to do is it goes parentheses, exponents. There's a no exponents. And then it goes to multiplication or division. Well, when I look up here, I see, Andre, that I do have multiplication. I have 7 times negative 6 minus n, and a 4 times n plus 3. So that's what I'm going to do first. So remember, this is what we call the distributive property. When you have a number outside your parentheses, that number multiplies to everything inside the parentheses. So 4 multiplies by n and plus 3. So now I rewrite my problem, 5n plus 7 times negative 6 is a negative 42. Really? Come on. 7 times negative n is a negative 7n equals 4 times n is 4n, and 4 times 3 is 12, positive 12, all right? Rather than writing a plus a negative, we know we can just write it as a subtraction, right? Plus a negative is the same thing as minus a negative. All right, so now let's look at combining our variables on the same side. Since these are on the same side, I'm going to rewrite them next to each other. 5n minus 7n minus 42 equals 4n plus 12. Well, 5n minus 7n is a negative 2n. Right? Then, now, whew, it's a long round, isn't it? Well, now we have a variable on the left and on the right, so we need to get them on the same side. And one helpful hint I said, guys, just if you want to think of a rule to follow, always try to get rid of the smaller variable. It's going to prevent usually negative numbers for you. So here, if I want to get rid of a negative 2n, I have to add 2n. So I'm going to get rid of it on the left side because that's going to go to 0. So I added 2n to this side. Remember, you can only add the 2n to your 4n. So you only add it once on the other side, and you can only combine the 2n to that 4n. You can't combine 12 and 2n. So therefore, I have a negative 42 equals 6n plus 12. Now, I need to get rid of the 12, so I subtract a 12. And then what I'm left with is a negative 54 equals 6n. Now, I see my variable is being multiplied by 6, so I divide by 6, and I get a negative 9 equals n. Sorry, I didn't want that to cut you off. You all right? That's it? So you have negative 9 is, great, is equal to n. Then we plug back in our... Wait, how do I do minus 12 and 54? You owe $42, oh, okay. right? If you borrow 12 more dollars, yeah, you're going to owe more. So then I put my sign back in. So I have n is less than <coughs> negative 9. All right? I usually don't like graphing this because it can get confusing when I have my variable on the right side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remember that my inequality sign, the little alligator mouth, is eating the number. So I'm going to rewrite it with my variable to the left. All right? Now, you guys could do test points, but um, for this example, I'm just going to kind of do the shortcut. 
So I make my point at negative 9. Negative 10. Negative 8. Negative 7. All right? We make a point at negative 9, a nice big one. I notice that negative 9 is not less than negative 9. So that is false, right? Also, just remember, whenever it's less than or greater than, it's an open circle. Then I notice that my arrow is pointing to the left. And all numbers that are less than negative 9, that would be negative 10, negative 11, negative 12. So all numbers to the left make that true. So since they're true, my graph goes to the left. Okay? Turn off, please. Thank you. Hold on, don't walk across.